Who doesn't love a good bar of chocolate? I know I do. And a bunch of other people do too. Chocolate is one snack that has one of the largest fan bases and consumer rates in the entire world. From little kids to adolescents and teenagers to even men and women of various ages, the chocolate snack has transcended all ages and has become much loved in different areas of the world. While we can mostly agree that a large percentage of the world loves chocolate, the snack has taken many forms over the years. There have been chocolate candy, chocolate drinks, chocolate flavored ice cream, chocolate cookies, and many more. However, one of the most popular forms of the snack is the chocolate bar, and there is a wide variety of chocolate bars worldwide. But this also raises the question of how this amazing snack is made, especially from our favorite brands. We go behind the scenes to see how chocolate bars are made, with an emphasis on how Twix chocolate bars are made, as well as a shocking bit of information about Twix. Chocolate is a key ingredient and one of the favorite flavors of many foods across the globe. However, regardless of its popularity, many people still don't know how chocolate is made or the processes involved in its production. Chocolate is actually a product that requires a series of complex procedures to make, and this production process starts with the agricultural product, cocoa. This agricultural product comes from some tropical evergreen cocoa trees, like Theobroma cocoa, which are cultivated in the wet lowland tropics of West Africa, Southeast Asia, and Central and South America. A series of steps go into harvesting this product and its transportation to the manufacturer. The first thing to note about harvesting cocoa is that it has to be done manually. This is because the fruit called cocoa beans grow in pods, said to be about the size of a football, which sprouts off of the cocoa tree's trunk and branches. Normally, the pods start out green in color and later turn orange when they become ripe. When the pods become ripe, farm workers travel through the cocoa plantations with machetes and gently cut the pods off the cocoa trees. The main reason machines aren't used is they can damage the cocoa tree or the pods and clusters of flowers that grow from the tree's trunk. As a result, farm workers must harvest the cocoa pods by hand using short, hooked blades attached to long poles to harvest even the highest fruit. Once the cocoa pods have been harvested and collected into a basket, they are taken to a processing facility, where the pods are opened and the cocoa beans within them are removed. These cocoa pods can contain more than 50 cocoa beans each. And just so you know, these fresh cocoa beans are neither brown nor taste like the sweet chocolate they will ultimately produce. Once these cocoa beans have been removed, they are fermented by either placing them in large, shallow heated trays or covering them with large banana leaves. However, if the climate is just right, the cocoa beans may simply be heated by the sun. Farm workers periodically stir the beans up during the fermentation process, so they all come out equally fermented. This process causes the cocoa beans to become brown, which may take five to eight days. Once the fermentation process is completed, the cocoa beans are dried up before they can be packed into sacks and shipped to chocolate manufacturers. For the drying process, the farmer workers simply spread to the fermented cocoa beans on trays and leave them to dry in the sun. This process usually lasts about a week, and as a result, the cocoa beans end up being about half of their original weight. After the drying process, the dried cocoa beans are taken to chocolate manufacturers like Mars Incorporated, an American multinational manufacturer that produces the chocolate snack Twix. Once the dried cocoa beans reach the chocolate factories, they are passed through different machines that help to refine them into chocolate. Technically, these manufacturing processes usually differ slightly because of the different species of cocoa trees. However, most chocolate factories use similar machinery to break down the cocoa beans into chocolate and cocoa butter. The first step is to roast the fermented and dried cocoa beans to develop the flavor and color that our modern palates expect from refined chocolate. The roasting process makes the outer shells of the cocoa beans brittle so they can be removed, and the inner cocoa bean meat is then broken into little pieces called cocoa nibs. These cocoa nibs pass through various sieves that strain and sort these nibs based on their size in a process called winnowing. 
Once the cocoa nibs have been acquired, they are ground into cocoa liquor, otherwise known as cocoa mass or unsweetened chocolate. No other ingredients are added to the cocoa nibs. However, they change from solid to liquid, which makes you wonder how that happens. The grinding process gives rise to heat being generated, which causes the high amount of fat contained in the cocoa nib to melt. And as a result, the dry granular consistency of the cocoa nib is turned into a liquid. After the grinding process is the mixing process. However, this stage depends on the manufacturer's formula and methods. For those who don't know, Twix is a caramel shortbread chocolate bar consisting of a biscuit covered with other confectionery coatings and toppings, most commonly caramel and milk chocolate. The main ingredient of every Twix chocolate bar is milk chocolate, which is made up of chocolate, cocoa butter, sugar, skim milk, milk fat, lactose, soy lecithin, artificial flavors, and PGPR an emulsifier made from soybeans, castor beans, or sunflower seeds. Other ingredients mixed with the cocoa liquor include enriched wheat flour, corn syrup, palm oil, dextrose, skim milk, sugar, and less than 2% of modified cornstarch, cocoa powder, salt, soy lecithin, baking soda, and artificial flavor. After the mixing process, the acquired blend is refined to bring the added milk and sugar particle size down to the desired fineness. The steps involved in making this chocolate bar are quite straightforward. It starts with mixing up the secret cookie dough used in every Twix bar, after which the cookie shape is formed by pressing the dough into a brass circle die. Over 50 tons of this cookie shaped dough is produced and baked to perfection, after which a layer of chocolate is spread on top of it. However, this isn't the end of the production process, as the caramel at 105 degrees Fahrenheit is then spread on top of the chocolate-covered snack. Once the caramel is cool, another layer of chocolate is spread on top. It may shock you to know that Twix Chocolate Bar is made by the same company that makes other confectionery items like Mars Bars, M&Ms, Milky Way Bars, Skittles, and Snickers. Mmm, I love me some Snickers. Non-confectionary items like combo snacks, Dalmio pasta sauce, Ben's Original, and even pet foods like Pedigree, Whiskas, Neutro, and Royal Cannon brands. This company has been in business since 1911, when Franklin Clarence Mars started it with his second wife, Ethel V. Mars Twix production originally started in the United Kingdom in 1967. It might also shock you to know that the production of chocolate bars may predate the French Revolution, which started in 1789. However, the first mass production chocolate bars were made in 1819 by Swiss grocer and chocolatier Francois Louis Kaler, while milk chocolate was invented in 1875 in Switzerland by Daniel Peter and Henry Nestle. What is your favorite variant of the Twix chocolate bar? Leave your answer in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for new videos.